Hey, we're back. This is John. Hey, it's Paul. And it's Eric. And it's What If Geeks. And we are here with uh, another rousing review of The Mandalorian, the final chapter of this season, Chapter 8, The Rescue. And I'll hold my um, bravado until the end. <laughs> we got we to use, uh, use Star Wars terminology here. It's episode... 16. No, this is chapter. Chapter 16, but you said eight. Oh, eight. It's yeah. episode eight of the season, but it's chapter 16. Chapter 16. See? See? You're right. You're Catch right. You with that shit. Oh, all right. I bow to your knowledge. As I do most of it. That's not me. It's, it's, that's that's <laughs> a, a Lucasfilm trying to make up for the fact that all the movies were episodes. <laughs> yeah, well, they <laughs> ought to make up for some shit this episode. <laughs> Or this chapter. <laughs> All right, so what do you say? Let's get into this. Uh, how do we start this one off? Uh, they're chasing down a ship to catch Dr. Pershing. Yeah, there's an I Imperial think. shuttle flying through space. Right. And, and Slave One's coming up behind them. And they shoot them basically with an EMP blast, right? Knock out their system. Yeah, something don't like they that. First, don't they first go find... Uh, they go get Bo Katan. Oh, and... yeah, 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 yeah. They do all that. Whoops. Yeah, we fast forwarded through like. Yeah, so they go get they go get Bo Katan and uh, the other one. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, 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 it's actually in the opposite order. You guys, we had it right. Really? I probably just pulled up the episode. Oh, okay. the, the the space battle chasing Doctor Sh- Pershing's uh, uh, Imperial shuttle is the first thing that happens. It's the opening scene. Oh uh, yeah, because it's Boba. Mando and uh, Fennec, right? Yeah, and uh, no, and, not Fennec, uh, uh, Cara Dune, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're right, you're right. Because uh, they show up to grab Dr. Pershing, and they bo- uh Now, really cool shot. After he shoots them with the MP blast, they're dead in space, and Slave One comes up in their their front view. Like real slow, like Jaws, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, "Oh shit, this is not good." So they board the ship and they get into the cockpit, and the wow. two pilots are there with the doctor. That this is a great scene. Awesome, yeah. And just to show you how gritty they can get back back when Star Wars, like a New Hope, before Lucas started messing with it, you know, the Han shot first kind of shit. They're doing all that kind of shit in this in this series. The one pilot grabs hold of the doctor and <clears throat> starts challenging them like, hey, you know, don't come any closer. And the second pilot is like, hey, look, it's cool. I'm not with him. We can work something out. And the first pilot fucking shoots him in the back and kills him. Yeah. And he's like, that's it. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's game over. And, uh, well, and, yeah. and, he, and he's taking his own guy as hostage, right? He's taking Dr. Yeah. Persting as hostage. Like, hey, it's a high value target. Don't fucking kill me or I'll kill him. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm gonna blow his fucking brains out, and he starts talking shit to Kara. Yeah, he says, uh, "What is that?" Oh, you're from Al- he says, "You're from Alderaan." I see the tattoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he tells her he was on the Death Star, and then she's like, "Which one?" And he basically right. says, "The one that blew up Alderaan." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's like, the one that blew up Alderaan, and, and he says some shit like, uh, "Well, he tries to at first, you know, he gives his little side of it, which they tried to do a couple episodes ago, right, with the Imperial officer and and uh, Burr and all that stuff, you know." And he says like, "Well, you know, you know how many millions of people were on the Death Star you just des- you destroyed?" And then he was like, "It was a right. small price to pay, though, for for stopping a bunch of terrorists or something like that." Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. This pilot is like, you can you can definitely they definitely give you um, a look into why they believe what they believe or how they believe what they believe you know what i mean and uh yeah so you, as, as eric said it goes back to the other episode with bill burr where he's like it all depends on where you're from like good guy bad guy whatever it all sort of you know if you were um from one of the planets taken over from the empire then you believe one thing if you were from somewhere else you probably believe a different thing so it was a an interesting like to to that guy right the rebels are terrorists and insurgents and all that other stuff yeah yeah so yeah so basically he talks to and i i knew it was gonna happen too the minute he said you know blowing up her planet was a small price to pay she just straight up shoots him right in the face 
Yeah. You know, and I was like, even, yeah. even, the, even the way she said it when he's like, I was on the Death Star, she's like, which one? <laughs> like, I dare you to say Death Star too. <laughs> yeah. 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 So she shoots him in the face and uh, I'll just, I'll jump ahead, but not too much. Just like a, a little aside that I caught or a little, a nice little touch that I caught later on while they're talking to the doctor you can see like a singe mark or like like where how close that blaster bolt came to his head because <laughs> oh, right? the guy was hiding behind him yeah you can see it there's a little singe there and you're like oh shit you know so the attention to detail in this show is pretty damn good yeah you know? which uh, um are, are we gonna are we gonna move forward sorry because oh, go ahead. then is when they go to find uh bo yeah. and uh Oh, what the hell's the other girl's name? I forgot it now. The one that's played by uh, Sasha Banks. Uh, uh, oh, well, it'll, it'll, no matter. It'll come to me. But, you know, they go to see them on whatever planet they're on um, to try to get them to come with it. There's immediately a fight that happens, which I think is Favreau paying a lot of attention to detail. Maybe it's Filoni. I don't know. But paying a lot of attention to detail. And there's this whole little battle that goes back and forth of you're not a Mandalorian. Yes, I am. Right. And it's like the it's an argument fans have been having because of extended universe and what's canon or whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there is. Yeah, because Boba is basically like, you yeah. know, we don't need her. Because first she's like, you know, I, you're on your own. Oh, it, he says, uh, you know, I need your help. They t- they took the kid and Boca Town's like, who? And he, he says, Moff Gideon. And she's like, You're on your own. No, there's no way. And Boba says, We don't need them. And she said, "You're a disgrace to your armor." <laughs> and then that's and then when he called her was. princess. Yeah, yeah. So he knows who she is. Yeah. Which I mean, he would, you know, because of like his father and everything else that was going on. Like he, he would know, you know. And then she makes that uh, that comment that they seem really... to immediately know him. Well, she says um, he says something about you know because she says you know you're, you're not a Mandalorian. He's yeah you know. Yes, I am. My father, blah, blah blah. And she says, "You mean your donor?" So, right. <laughs> and she, because she, again, going back to the Clone Wars cartoon, she was around the clones a lot. She says, "I've heard your voice thousands of times." Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, and I'm, and I'm sure she knows specifically who Boba Fett is. Even if she doesn't, though, you know, she would immediately recognize the voice of a clone. You know. So yeah. So then uh, Boba gets into it with. Uh, Sasha Banks character, which they have a really good fight. Yeah, she takes him down. Yeah, they, 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 she DDTs his ass. She, yeah, she, she, gets, <laughs> she, she gets in a wrestling move, but they go back and forth for a little bit, and like uh, they get broken up. Uh, and I guess that's, that's right after because they got to have the fight until you come to an agreement or whatever, you know. And they so they patch things up and. Bo-Katan tells him, you know, I want what's mine, you know, and he says, you can have whatever you want. The kid is my only priority, you know. So then what? Well, she has, there's a massive miscommunication here that becomes important in a future scene where yes. the, she just tells him, I want the dark saber, and then she sort of is like, well, Moff Gideon's mine, or, or something to that effect, she right? Said he needs well, to surrender twice. He needs to surrender to me or something like that. Yeah, but or, she doesn't or, really make it clear why, and, right. and and so when Mando gets put into a situation later, he really doesn't even not that he has much of a choice in the first place, but he doesn't think anything of it, and then it becomes a deal. So she could have just said like, "Hey, I, I need that. I, I have need to, to take it him. from him." <laughs> yeah. yeah, she could have. Yeah, she could have really easily cleared that up, but because he said like, "Whatever you want, fine, come on." <laughs> so they all go. And they come up with a really cool plan. <laughs> so, um, basically, Boba's chasing the Imperial shuttle in Slave One, <clears throat> and um, everybody else is on board there. So they're going to infiltrate Moff Gideon's ship, and they tell uh, Mando he's got to take down the Dark Troopers. He's got to seal. He's got to seal them off before they activate, because the doctor tells him it takes him a little while to uh, to power up. But he reveals that they're not stormtroopers; they're just 
they're androids or the droids. So, you know, they're just right. pure they, mechanical. They figured out the, uh, the problem was people under the suits. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no people in those dark trooper suits. So, uh, so the plan is for Mando to go take, you know, seal them off and take them out of the fight and then go get the kid while the others go after Moff Gideon. And uh, the, <laughs> the plan goes awesome. Like when they come flying in, they radio Moff Gideon's ship for help with a distress signal, right? Saying, you know, they're under attack. And Boba makes it look good. He's shooting around them, right? He's flying, he's chasing them. And something I realized, though, like the second time I watched it, I was like, because Moff Gideon says, you know, deploy the TIE fighters. But he's pretty much ready for them when they get on board. And I realized, yeah, of course he would be because two male pilots left and two females are coming in on this ship yelling for him to help them. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Gender assumptions aside, I guess, in 2021. But uh, (laughs) he knows those are not the people that were on that ship. I'm sure it takes less than two seconds for whatever credentials on the ship and who was piloting it to come up on his screen and he's like yeah nah yeah nice try and well, i think they like, i think they do tell they do tell him too after a minute like negative you cannot come in do not do it and she just sort of crash lands into the thing anyway. yeah she flies right in there now the deployment of the tie fighters was really cool right down the, the middle of the ship coming out but then, yeah, it's yeah, weird it's right it's almost like uh it's almost like a little bit of a um uh falcon design or something with the little like pinchers coming out it's yeah kind of a strain it does look like a butt plug from the right angle but um <laughs> Up close it doesn't quite yeah or it's a really <laughs> interesting maybe it's a dp plug <laughs> <laughs> well we took it there there go the spot yeah, there go. <laughs> yeah, now, now it suddenly reminds me of alien it's like the butt plug goes in and a smaller butt plug comes out <laughs> <laughs> Deploy second butt plug. <laughs> All right, let me check my list of shit I ever thought I'd hear said. Nope. <laughs> Not there. Uh, all right, so once she flies into the butt plugs, uh, <laughs> crashes the ship, the stormtroopers are there, they come walking up to see what the hell's going on, the ramp drops, and immediately all the stormtroopers get shot in the face. Yep. Girls come out, and they go off to go try to find Moff Gideon. And then, yeah, and then, and I, all right, so we'll touch on that now, and I guess we'll touch on it again later just because I want to touch on the women. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a sound bite. Uh, <laughs> this is notice this is an easy way for them to do that little girl power thing without just punching you in the head with it, like the yeah, Avengers in game, yeah, right, yeah, right. Like, because you didn't really think about it until later on. You're like, "Oh, that was all all the women on the team just did <laughs> did all this shit and made it look good, right?" So they go off, and the Mando goes and sneaks off to go take out the Dark Trooper. Anybody yeah. want to take over? Yeah, you know, really, really. I was just gonna say that the way that they made it work fine was that they just went for it. Like they just ran out. It wasn't like a one of them comes out and the next one comes out like me too. I'm supporting her. Okay, then we go shoot, right? Because that's how they did it in the Avengers Endgame. It had to be like all of them showing up at different times, pulling off their helmets and shit, you know, rather than just going yeah, for it. Yeah, that one big panning shot. They never did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was. It was all four girls on it, and they just ran out of the ship and fucking killed everybody. Which leaves Amando to come to come out later and go find the kid and take out the dark troopers. Right. So now we, uh, I think, do we stay with the women first, right? Because Mando kind of sneaks off, but then it cuts back to the women because they're storming the place, and they do something good. One of, one of the things that um, I think happened a couple times in this episode that one of them we passed over. I had to put subtitles on because there was a couple different times where I, I had no idea what they were saying. Like there were some inside sort of Star Wars jokes, I guess. Um, the scene where Mando and Boba go get Bo-Katan and um, Sasha Banks's character 
they say something like, look at the, I don't even remember what the words are now. It's, it's, it's look at the X call the, it's the Star Wars version of the pot calling the kettle black. But he says, look yes. at the something call the other thing slimy. And I'm like, what the hell did they say? And I, <laughs> so I rewound it. I listened to it again. And I rewound it like three times. I'm like, I have no idea what that. So I put subtitles on. Um, and it happens again when the, the Caradoon and Fennec and the two, Bo-Katan and the other one are in the elevator. And she can't get her gun unjammed. Caradoon can't get her gun unjammed. Which is funny, but go ahead. Yeah, and then she calls it a something, um, a, a some sort of Star Wars word, and I'm like, what the hell did she say? Um, and then she finally gets it unjammed, and she's like, oh, there we go. But it was a, you know, she's, again, she says something that is sort of, you know, in joke in that you universe. Know, like a that curse or like a, yeah. 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 But, yeah, so, yeah, when they do the, the I guess the first fight is when they're going through the ramp. It says son of a mud scuffer. Yeah, there you go. Son of a yeah. monk stuffer. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and what's the other one? What's the thing when when they're having that look at the something called the something something? Are you talking about back in the, oh in the bar or whatever? In the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if that isn't the quack duck calling the stifling slimy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> But you know, I, I oh, call that's right because she we her. forgot about that. She calls him a sidekick. I didn't know sidekicks were allowed to talk. Yeah, and he, yeah <laughs> which is so just so funny because she is clearly a sidekick. Like. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I caught on to it in context right away. Yeah, but I was like, what? What? The quacta calling the stifling slimy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that'll a mud scuffer later. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, so we have a, yet another uh, Star Wars scene where we're running across a ramp with no railings, and uh, the stormtroopers all come out from behind them. Now, when they run across, the two Mandalorian girls jump off the sides of the ramp, and I'm like, ah, oh, I know what's about to happen. And they go running up through the, the other two, Fennec and Kara go running up through the ramp, and a squad of stormtroopers comes running up behind them, and they're like, you know, stop where you are. And I say, here we go. And the two of them come flying up from beneath the ramp and flank them on either side and shoot the shit out of them, kill them all. Yeah. Really cool effect was that one stormtrooper falling off and he goes through the force field into space. You see the little... <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. So, yeah. So then they go through to the elevator. And that's where Kara has her mud scuffer line because her Oh, my gun is jammed. And I'm like, hang on, your laser rifle is jammed? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? Right. Okay. It's jammed by the bullets of light. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know how you clear that particular weapon, but apparently it's to use it as a club and smash yeah. people over the head with it, which, again, it was just an excuse to show her beating the shit out of people without a gun, or, well, with a gun, yeah. but in a different way. She flips the rifle over, grabs it by the barrel, and starts beating the piss out of stormtroopers with this fucking gun. Which is, again, I, my little snarky, really, it jammed, aside. It, it was worth it for me just to see that scene. Just to see her beating the shit out of them with it. It was funny. So they clear that out, and I think that's when we cut over to Mando. Yeah. And he's... Uh, Sneaking up to where the dark troopers are. Oh, and this whole time the dark troopers are activating and they start to come out of the pod. And they got a really cool, like, uh, dubstep theme music that, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like apparently dark troopers like listen, listen to Skrillex. But, uh, <laughs> Here, you know. here's the other thing everything that the Empire makes, if you look at all the Star Wars movies, everything takes forever to heat up, yeah, right? The the Death Star main weapon, Death Star 2's weapon, uh, the thing in Last Jedi, like all of the, the Dark Troopers, they what? all. Everything. The Last Jedi? What is that? Uh, what, what, is the, what is that canon? No. I'm just fucking with you, man. <laughs> um, I thought, did I blink out again? <laughs> um, that canon thing at the end, right? Like that thing takes forever to you. Like well, all the Empire weapons like start really cold and have to get like a million degrees and it takes forever. Yeah. Uh, 
Right, but again, the the dark troopers like take forever. They're warming up. They're warming up. They're warming up, and um, Mando manages to get uh, one gets loose. Uh, they start sort of punching. So, yeah, he gets to the door. Yeah, and now it was a cool effect though. And once they were powering up, the uh, like the vacuum tubes bursting off as they were, like with, from the coolant or whatever as they come out. Yeah, and they all start marching toward the door, and he manages to lock the door. But not quite. Right. Is we have a like a fucking Terminator moment where the thing, what the one mm-hmm. in the front grabs the door, yeah. and his face is right there, and Mando tries to stop it, but it breaks its way through the door, punches him across the hallway, right, right? <laughs> and manages to get through the door. The door shuts. Yep. So it's him yep. and one dark trooper, and this and thing he, fucking manhandles him. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, 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 the others sucked out. Mando handles him. Mando handles. Mando handles him. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. He manages Sorry. to get the others sort of sucked out into space, but yeah, that one just starts whipping his ass. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. He gets them all sucked out into space. Yeah. No offense to Mando, but what a failure of a plan! Like you have seen these things like fly through, you know, the atmosphere. They have jetpack <laughs> feet. Like what? I mean, I guess it saved him for the moment, but like, what was the real plan? Like those things were definitely yeah. coming back. Like oh yeah, no I, chance was, they I knew- were. Too. I was like, I was, yeah, I was like, oh, they'll be back. Yeah, because I was like, that's too easy. Like, they they have to be back, right? But then they do try to give you like a sense of how ridiculously powerful they are by doing it this way, where he just has to fight one, and almost every single one of his tools fails. Right? Like, yeah, he can't he like, can't he shoot the damn has- thing. It's like it's got best our armor. He tries to fire through the open parts of the thing, and it's just like flaming. Like, ha ha. Okay, yeah. it him down. Yep. Well, now, yep. another cool effect happens right before that, though. The thing grabs him by the throat and starts punching his head Up hard enough to punch his head through the wall because his best guard won't dent. So he's just, the the coolant in the wall is coming out and like, it's just caving the wall in with his head. So, you know, you know he's got his bell rung, but he's not really, like, dying yet, you know. So we, we, have, to, ask, we have to ask, what the hell happened to Boba's helmet? I, I Right, what hit him? <laughs> All the energy in the universe. Apparently. <laughs> so yeah, so this thing he tries to light it on fire, just stares him down like, you know, you're a bitch. And uh yep. it tosses him down the hallway. So he sets off the whistling birds. And they do nothing. Right. This thing just kind of like shakes him off and keeps coming. And right when it's getting ready to attack him again. That's when he breaks out the Beskar spear and jams it through this thing's skull, and that does the trick. And and once again, you know, talking about terrible Imperial design, everything's got to have, like, a massive weak point, right? (laughs) We made this badass thing with the neck. It's like like fucking paper. I mean, just, you know, go at it. (laughs) Yeah, the Beskar spear just goes right through it like it's nothing. So, but it was a really cool, like Paul said, a cool setup to show you how badass these things are, right? And this becomes important, of course. Yeah, it becomes becomes very important later. Because you didn't really see them do anything except for land on the the planet and grab Grogu and take off. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Mando limps off, and I'm sure he's cursing under his breath at this point. (laughs) He's like, I had to come by myself, right? So he limps off to try to go go find the kid, and uh, I don't know if we cut back to the women at all, but briefly you see them kill the last handful of stormtroopers on the bridge and take it, and then it's right back to Mando again. Yes, and that's they're on the bridge because yes, because they go, "Where's Moff Gideon? He's not there on the bridge." And Mando gets to the kid's cell, opens the door, and there's Gideon standing over the kid with the dark saber right over the kid's head, and. uh so they have an exchange. Anybody remember exactly what? Because I know what it was basically was. But well, I mean, he, he's saying like I'm going to kill the kid, and then he's like, "Put down your weapon." Mando kicks it over, and then Moff Gideon actually gives him a whole round of bullshit. He turns off the dark saber. He's like, "You know what? I just want to escape. You can have the kid. I don't give a fuck." You know? Yeah, yeah. Because because uh, Mando tells him, "I just want the kid," and so he shuts the dark saber off. Says, "Take him. That's fine. Just take him." I just want you off my ship, and I never want to see you again. And Mando goes and gets. He's like, I got kid. essentially what, and Moff Gideon says, I got essentially what I wanted, yeah. which was 
his blood or DNA yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Took his blood, whatever. So Amanda goes, scoops up the kid. Like, this is not going to end horribly, you right. know? <laughs> and uh, Gideon goes and ignites the Darksaber and attacks him from behind. So, because, you know, puts the kid back down on the bench and two of them are in the hallway again fighting. Really cool fight scene. Yeah. Because he's going after Mando with that dark saber, and Mando whips out that Beskar spear. So now you get to see the Beskar versus a, a lightsaber, and that was really cool. Like I like the effect where, you know, because we had this conversation before. Like, of course, with all the Mandalorian wars with the Jedi, they'd be the ones to come up with something to, you know, essentially block lightsabers or whatever. And that was the Beskar. Notice as he's fighting with the spear, when he's blocking it, you can see it heating up. So it's not going to last forever, but it's doing the job, you know. So I, and I like that that attention to detail there, you know. So they have a really cool fight, and Mando does his little like. But I don't kick- remember that in in this in the episode with Ahsoka Tano. I don't remember that happening in that fight. Maybe I don't it did, and I just don't remember it. But the the. What was she, the Empress or the Magistrate yeah. or whatever? Yeah, she right. has the spear, and she, and Ahsoka had the lightsabers and then loses one. But I don't remember it heating up that way. I also don't remember them sort of engaged like that as as long as those two were. Right. Um, yeah, because they, they they hold each other for a second, or for a few seconds with that, in a few different poses, you know. Um, but yeah, Mando does this really cool little like kicks his foot back on the spear and it flips up and hits Moff Gideon. And essentially like, then he uses that to knock him off balance and disarm him, knocks the dark saber away. And uh, Gideon's on the floor. And is, is that when he starts laughing or uh, what? Is... I think so. Cause that's the point where you realize that the dark troopers have sort of circled around and are coming back. Yeah. Yeah. The dark troopers coming back. <laughs> And he starts laughing because he's like, what are you going to do now? No. Basically, right? Cut to the bridge. The girls are still trying to figure out what's going on. The door opens. And there's Mando with Gideon in shackles. And he's holding the ignited Darksaber. And bo just looks at him like, motherfucker. <laughs> what's the one thing I said? <laughs> <clears throat> Men don't listen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Mando's clueless because she didn't yeah, forget like, tell no, him. No, no dummy, I needed that. Yeah. yeah. So she tells him, she's like, that was mine. He, you know, and he, so he shuts it off and goes to hand it to her. It's here. Like, here. It's yours. And that's when Gideon is laying on the floor laughing. And he says, She can't take it. He's like, She's supposed to beat me. She's supposed to win it in combat. Which will bring us to I guess something that happened in the Clone Wars cartoons. That I hadn't seen yet, but Paul, do you know what I'm about to talk about? I do. All right, you want to take it? Yeah, I, I saw. Well, well, I saw a, a couple of YouTube videos about it. So apparently, in the Clone Wars, um, the Bo-Katan's younger sister, I believe, ends up with the dark saber and hands it to Bo-Katan, and Bo-Katan takes it and then becomes the ruler of Mandalore. Right. And 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 so it sets up a. A problem, I guess, in that why can't she just take it now? So she either shouldn't have taken it then, or she should take it now, but you can't have it both ways. So, well, now I'm wondering, because I didn't see that episode, so I'm wondering how, did the sister win it in combat and then give it to her, or she just found it and gave it to her? Because I, think I'm she thinking, I'm, I might have just found them a little way out. Maybe. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I think she gets it I can't remember how she gets it, um, but froze. she just hands it over. Both froze. All right. Froze. No, maybe it was you. <laughs> okay. I think it was you. Uh, well, was what if uh, it is me? Okay. Yeah. Am I back now? Yep. All right. I'm back. <laughs> it was what if geeks. Uh, so what I'm thinking is maybe they're going to explain it like she was able to take it then for whatever reason, but because Gideon defeated her in battle and took it, she had to win it back. And since Mando beat him, now she, because he tells him that he, he uh, Gideon tells Mando, you no, know, she's got to defeat you in combat for it now. That's the only way she could take it. So I don't, yeah. but yeah, but it's either way, it sets up. 
Never uh, mind. What, Never so, mind. You just paused. So here's what, it, here's what it could be. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So here's in in Rebels season three. Sabine Wren discovers the dark saber among a collection of Darth Maul's possessions on Dothamir. Previously in Clone Wars, the former Sith won the blade in a duel with Pre Visla, the leader of the Death Watch. Sabine trains with the dark saber, hoping to use it as a symbol to rally the various Mandalorian clans. Blah blah blah. But upon turning to Mandalore. Her mother tells Sabine she cannot truly lay claim to the Darksaber unless she wins it in combat. Later, Sabine manages to do just that when she fights Gar Saxon, the Empire's ruler, installed ruler of Mandalore. Yet, though Sabine rightfully wins possession of the Darksaber, she chooses instead to find a leader who will unite Mandalore against the Empire, not believing herself destined for the task. Sabine goes on to present Bo-Katan with the Darksaber in Rebel Season 4, and the response from the gathered Mandalorians certainly suggests she is its new master. And then the implication here is that a potential plot hole, since Bo-Katan once accepted the Darksaber without winning it in combat, yet wouldn't take it from Din Djarin when he is tempted to present it to her after defeating Gideon in Chapter 16, The Rescue. Except for in, in that one, she just thought she wasn't worthy or whatever. It wasn't a, I didn't win it in combat or anything like that. So they could, they could, they could wave it away. They could also say that, you know, she took it the first time and it didn't work out. So now she feels like that's why, yep. <clears throat> you know, I should, I should have won it in combat, like a, like a real Mandalorian. Yeah. Like I didn't deserve it la- last time. So I'm not going to make that mistake this time. Yeah. All right. Mine's, so where the fuck were we? Uh, the dog troopers are coming back and Gideon is laughing now. Yeah. And uh, he's tried, he tries to give, Bo-Katan, the dark saber, she can't take it. Gideon starts laughing and says she has to win it in combat. He goes, okay, I concede. Here it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He basically, I forfeit here. And he's kind of like, not gonna work. yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, so again, it's going to be there, an issue. The dark troopers are, are coming in and they start busting. Um, they're about to punch through the door of the bridge. Yeah. Right, they man, they get back on the ship. They're walking through. They're punching the door to the bridge. Everyone's, you know, there's that scene where they sort of do everyone's faces and they're sort of resigned to this. Um, what's going to happen? They know it's going to be a bad battle. Uh, yeah, we're, we're about uh-huh. to die fighting. Yeah, well, think- Gideon, Gideon even says that to them. He says, "You all know the only people who are left alive after this are going to be me and the kid." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, now speaking of the kid, because this is going to be important in a second. This kid is just like slumped over in the chair, like just done, you know. And then I think the scene is it's Caradoon. You see the sort of the big windows at the front of the bridge, and you see an X Wing come in. And Caradoon goes, Oh, great, an X Wing. Hooray, we're saved. Yeah, that is, that is yeah. the moment I knew what was happening. When yeah, it was, yeah, me too. I mean, I saw the X Wing, but then when she was like one X Wing, I'm like, Oh, motherfucker. Yeah. She's like one X Wing. <laughs> great, we're saved. Yeah, hey, like just like, like that. I was like, "Could it be?" Wait, they, I knew. Gonna... I knew everything I've been saying since fucking season one was about to happen. <laughs> what? Because we were we had we had talked amongst ourselves that it was, you know, how would they do if this is what, what they were going to do? How would they do it? And 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 so we were pretty convinced it was somebody else, right? We all thought right. Ezra Bridger. I thought Ezra Bridger. Ezra Bridger but, was good, but. I mean, as soon as I saw that X-wing, X-wing, though, dude. Now, all right, so we'll do the I was up. like, are they gonna, are they? <laughs> the lead then, up to this whole thing, though. So the X-Wing comes in. They filmed it perfectly. I, I just want to put that out there before we get into how this thing plays out. They filmed it perfectly. The, is it, could it be, what's going on is really cool. Yeah, so yeah. go ahead. Because, and then you see hooded figure um on the you, monitor you're watching sort of the on the monitors right you're watching it like from the security cameras on the ship you're watching um, oh there's one thing we skipped power lightsaber yeah one thing we skipped right. was when the x-wing comes in you see it settling in to like, onto the ship grogu lifts his head up and looks around uh and that's i was like aha yeah see that's uh, you knew it's whoever he called out to, 
Right. I actually didn't notice that the first go around, but since I'm rewatching it while you talk about it, it, it really does. Yeah. He picks as soon as the ship comes in and she and and and, and Cara Dune says that line about one X Wing we're saying, then it goes to Grogu and he picks his head up and makes that coo sound and he's like looking like this. <laughs> yeah. Because he can feel the presence, probably, right? Because they've established, at least in the original trilogy, that happens. Yep. The uh, You see sort of hooded figure, um, do some force power, and then green lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. In, in, then, in a gloved hand. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the gloved hand right away. Um, I saw it. I saw the, the green time. lightsaber. And I'm, yeah, second time. And I'm like, <gasps> and then, yeah. but, but you can't, <laughs> for me, it was like, Okay, how are we going to do this? Like, yeah, that—that's the reveal. Like, and once the figure started really moving, I was like, I know, I know who this is, you know. Yeah. So, and I, as we you might as well just come out and say it now. Well, at that point, we all knew this is Luke fucking Skywalker, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and then there was another. There's another scene with. Um, I don't know if I don't know if he. Picks up, picks up one of the dark troopers or crushes it or does something, but it's with the gloved hand. That's when you're like, okay, now yeah. we just need to see how they're going to do this. Yeah, this is definitely Luke, right? Everybody but knew. It. Yeah, and, and they were setting it up for this too because when Mando fought the one single dark trooper and almost lost his shit, and this Jedi is like, you know, does not him, him down, fucking him up like was, nothing. He's yeah. not even making an effort. He's just like. Right. Yeah. Sometimes he passes by one and it comes back and kills it after. <laughs> yeah, and yep. the right before the the crush scene that uh, Paul mentioned, they do especially looking back when you know how like who it is and how it played out. That last scene right before he crushes that one is a mirror image of the Darth Vader scene at the end of Rogue One. Where he's just mowing down rebel troops, Luke. He's just mowing down dark troopers left and right. Right. Then he does. He crushes that last one like a fucking soda can, and <laughs> drops it to the floor, and the blast yeah. doors open up, and you see the green lightsaber in the smoke, just like you see Vader at the beginning of that scene. He comes walking through, shuts the saber off, puts it on his belt, and then pulls his hood back. And it's a de-aged Mark Hamill. It's yeah. it's literally like they deep faked his face <laughs> from Return of the Jedi, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And and again, now we're not quite there yet. It looked really, really good. Like when he when he when he just stood there, it looked amazing. Like you were like, holy fuck. Like <laughs> how the hell did they do that? Certainly then, better than uh, uh, Rise of Skywalker cutscene in the jungle or whatever. Oh yeah, it's better than that, and much better than yeah. like anything DC did. Uh, Steppenwolf. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the 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 Tarkin de aging too was really bad that they did. In, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's as good as uh, Carrie Fisher in Rogue One. Oh yeah, easily. And uh, Mando says, "Are you a Jedi?" He says, "I am." <laughs> and then. They have their interaction. There was, okay, so so you kind of know it's it's Luke Skywalker from when the X Wing comes in, but when he takes the hood down, what did you guys were you guys like? Awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Even though I knew it was definitely a, it was definitely one of those moments like oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I was because that whole fight scene it just ramped you up for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it was just like when he pulled the hood back, you were like son of a bitch. Yeah. Like holy shit, it's him. Yeah, it was amazing. But uh, yeah, they have a little interaction there. Uh, and another thing, something I caught on a YouTube video, and then I caught it when I, when I watched back. You can, if you really have been watching the Star Wars movies over and over and over again, you can tell that that's Red 5. And you can see R2 in the back when he oh, comes yeah. in. Yeah. So, but I mean, I mean, I couldn't tell exactly what ship it was. I just knew. So, yeah, I do want to say that I've been fucking saying Luke was going to show up since this goddamn series started and they showed Baby Yoda. And now I'm, bam, I called it. Fuck it. I've been on point with this season. (laughs) So uh, he tells them, you know, the child's 
very powerful, but he's not going to be safe until he learns how to use his abilities. And the kid's kind of hiding behind Mando, you know. And that's when I say that's where it gets like a little wonky is when they actually show Luke talking. But again, I mean, for the technology to be where we're at, I'll take it. You know what I mean? I, I won't complain about it at all. It's it's as good as it's going to be. And I'm sure in 15 years, just like they photoshopped out uh, Captain Blue Jeans, they'll go back and re-edit <laughs> this thing and, and make it better. But uh, you know, once they get that Uncanny Valley gone, they'll they'll, they'll come redo this shit. Uh, so yeah, they have a little interaction about taking the kid. And uh, he tells Mando, I'll protect him with my life. You know, which we can get into that <laughs> in a few minutes. Yeah. There's also, he says, um, Mando's like, he doesn't want to go with you. Right. And, uh, and Luke says, he wants your permission or your blessing or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Basically, says, you need to tell him it's okay. Yeah. And, and then, so Mando says, so, he, so Mando picks him up and he's like, uh, it's okay, go. And then, uh, uh, he, Baby Yoda puts his hand on the mask, like, let me see the face. Yeah, yeah, and, I want to see you. And yeah, and so, and it's it's crazy how much, like, that's kind of an emotional scene. Like, I didn't cry, but but I was like, hmm, that's they're getting a lot of emotion out of a puppet, yeah, um, and a guy in a mask. Like, yeah, yeah really they're... good, really good writing and really good production when when a puppet and a guy in a mask can sort of start to to bring out emotion like that. And so he takes the mask off again. Um, but the, and, but the, this time, funny. importantly, in front of everyone, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then babe, and then Baby Yoda puts his hand on his, like kind of strokes his face a little bit. And I'm like, wow, they're, they're really getting a lot of... <laughs> yeah, they're really <laughs> going for it. They're trying to make every fanboy cry like a yeah. bitch. So yeah, 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 it was really um, good. Yeah, and uh, and then you see Mando's eyes are like, you know, he he's watering up like he hadn't cared about anything, um, and and he's on the verge of tears, and so then he yeah he tells him, him I'll see I'll see you go. again. You know, he says I will I'll see, see you again. again. Yeah. And he puts him down, and you know, Grogu starts waddling over there, and then you get your other cameo yeah. surprise. Like you hear a little beep and R2 comes yep. walk, rolling out from the side of the thing and uh, he and comes, rolls over to him. Yeah, they roll, uh, he rolls over to the baby and the baby's looking at him and kind of coos at him. And so R2 kind of like lifts up that third leg of his and does his little side to side. Yeah. And uh, he's excited. And uh, which is funny because it sent, uh, it led me to that meme that I sent you guys where it's uh, R2 in front of baby Yoda and it's just a, like a little word balloon above him. It says, you're not going to hit me with a, a stick again, uh, or you're not going to hit me with a stick too, are you, you little fuck? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. So, Luke picks him up. Yep. They leave. Or they go to the uh, the door, the, and the baby's looking at Mando the whole time, you know? You may, we're getting everything out of this moment. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, they, he turns, and the three of them look, you know, look back at the whole group. The door shuts. So, they're gone. And then we cut. Right, I think we turn back to turn back to them. To them, Mando, no helmet. Uh, Gideon's on the floor, I think, still, and and everyone. Yes, because you know, he had a blaster. That's something we skipped over. He had a blaster hidden under on the floor. He was gonna, he yeah, was gonna kill himself, and Kara knocks him the fuck out before yep. he could do. It. Oh, you see the Jedi come across the grainy, gray, uh, black and white monitor. The look of how fucked I am on Moff Gideon's face is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> like just straight up. I shit my pants. This is not good. I'm yep. dead. Yeah. So like uh, he knew he, even he knew who it was, you know, he was like, fuck me. You know? So yeah. So then we cut to the credits. Right. And uh, Eric, you well, are recording since I left and came back. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Just checking. Because oh, I forgot yeah. to ask you to let me record again. Oops, thank God. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, uh, I think so, Mark, Hamill's, Mark Hamill's credited in the episode in the in this episode. It is. He, he is. Because that was him. 
That was actually him. They just they just did the CGI on his face. Yeah, because yeah. uh, it came out on Friday or Thursday night for some of the people that waited up to watch it. And then he waited until like late Sunday night. And even he still kept his tweet vague, but his tweet basically came out on Sunday night that said, uh, I feel so happy and blessed that we were able to keep my involvement a secret for over a year, exclamation point. And then it was, you know, something like you guys rock or you guys are amazing. And it's like F and F, you know, for, for Favre and Filoni. Yeah. So, so even then he didn't want to, he didn't want to spoil it for anybody. He tweeted Friday night or Saturday morning, something like, seen anything good on TV lately? Did he? I missed that one. Something like that. Before all this, it, you know, they kept Baby Yoda like a, a super secret until it got revealed, right? Yeah. This, this one, this deception about Luke was extreme because not only did nobody know, but Mark Hamill has been on talk shows even this year. I'm talking like, like maybe May or June saying he would never resurrect the Luke Skywalker character. He's done with it. He's put it to bed. He yep. fucking knew then, because this wrapped in, what, February, I think, filming wrapped? He yeah. knew then that this had already happened and this thing was done. Yeah. I mean, not to say he lied, but, I mean, he lied. He lied in talk shows. He lied in interviews well, saying, like, yeah, you know, it's not going to happen that. you know. In the words of Obi-Wan, from a certain point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Resurrect. Right, right, right. <laughs> I mean, like, he did that inter- in Entertainment Weekly interview or whatever, and they said, would you ever play Luke again? He's like, no, I can't imagine doing that. No. That, that, was, that was six months ago from now. Like, yeah. He had already done it. I mean, I guess he could well, be telling the see. truth. He had already done it. He was done with it. Oh, no, I can't imagine doing it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so then we cut to another really well-kept secret because we did have that investors meeting where uh, Disney dropped a whole bunch of Star Wars shit and a whole bunch of Marvel shit or updates on Marvel shit, right? And you had all the Star Wars stuff that we already talked about coming out. And right at the end of the credits, it cuts. It gives you a cut scene, which it almost it never does, right? Uh, except for the one with Boba Fett. Well, no. So yeah. So this this cut, normally you have the artwork for the for the episode in the credits. You always see that in the background. It was not here this time. No. It's total black. Yep. And so I looked at the timer, and I'm like, I did too. too I'm like, there's still like seven minutes left. I'm like, there's yeah. still six or seven Something, minutes left. Like, yeah, the credits right. are never this long. Yeah, I knew something was going to happen, right? So, so yeah. at about five minutes from the end, the credits end, and you get a fade into the two sons of Tatooine. Yeah, <laughs> and it pans over, and you see Jabba's palace, mm-hmm. and I love how it goes into the palace, and you see the throne room, and there's Fat Bib Fortuna <laughs> sitting on the throne, <laughs> talking a weak way, and I'm like, of course he's fat. He's just sitting around. Everybody's doing shit for him. He took over, right? I was like, this is awesome. And I didn't know what was coming, right? So I was just, I'm laughing, like, look at this shit. This is great. You hear a couple of blaster shots and a couple of guards come tumbling down the stairs, right? Uh, similar to when Leia comes in as Bush with Chewbacca. One of the guards comes falling down the stairs, I think, as he comes as she comes walking in with him on the chain. So same thing, right? They come down, and it's Fennec. She shoots a couple of guards. She comes walking in, and as she walks down, Boba Fett comes walking down the stairs. Nice, gleaming armor, right? He was walking out, and Bib Fortuna looks over, and he's like, Boba! And, you know, you get the subtitles. He's just like, I thought you were dead. <laughs> this is the way he's talking to me. He's like, oh, shit, look at you. you know, like, he's like, Boba, I thought you were dead. I heard so many rumors. Boba Fett doesn't say a fucking word to him. He just pulls out his blaster and shoots him in the fucking chest. Kills him. Right? <laughs> Mind you, everybody's dead and, oh, and Fennec let the slave girl go. There's yeah, another like, twelve slave girl. Shoots, shoots the chain and gives her a nod. Get out of here. And she leaves. That's when Boba Fett comes down. They do that whole thing. He shoots Bib Fortuna. She walks behind the throne. He climbs up there and unceremoniously boots Boba uh, Bib Fortuna's fat ass off the throne and sits down on the throne. And I was like, holy shit, this is great. And she comes walking over with that blue ale 
sits on the fucking chair and takes a swig of it sitting next to him like what's up boss right? and <laughs> yeah. it cuts to black and it says the book of boba fett coming december 2021 yeah. i was like holy shit yep yeah. so yeah and that started another internet rumor immediately which everybody was like all right with grogu gone mando's over season three yeah mando's arc is over is because it's chapters right so is boba fett gonna be cha- like cha- season three right right uh Lucasfilm came back out and said, nope, Mandalorian is filming. Pedro Pascal is on set. We're, we're filming. And Boba Fett's filming. It's a separate series that they kept hidden. To me, this is obvious. Two different storylines. You leave Boba Fett on Tatooine. Um, you go back to all those old Boba Fett adventures from EU and stuff that they can borrow the shit out of. That's a done deal. That can easily be a separate series. And now you have Mando who holds on to the Darksaber and he doesn't want it, but he earned it, right? And and yeah. Bo Katan, who said, you know, she wanted that dark saber to rule Mandalore, but now she can't take it. Season three has to be about retaking Mandalore. That's it. And and which one of them is going to rule it? <laughs> yeah, the guy that doesn't and want to, up, or the girl that wants to, but worse than anything, right? Well, and it sets them up to be sort of frenemies, I guess, right? Like, yeah. How is she going to get it back from him? He he can't just hand it to her. He doesn't really want to rule Mandalore. She really does. Um, yeah. So how's that going to work out? Yeah, I think this next season. So now we can get into all this. I think uh, our expectations for the next season. One, I mean, my expectations are like already like way the fuck up here. Like I, I'm ready for this shit. I, I it couldn't start soon enough. Right. I agree. But um, yeah, I I definitely think they're going to be at odds with each other. You know. Uh, I don't know how they're going to resolve it. There's going to have to be a, a fight at some point. Yeah. But I bet she's going to forget the fact that she didn't tell him everything he needed to know. And she's just going to be pissed that he's got the dark saber and she goes, she's going to come after him for it. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting though. The entire, the, the entire first two seasons are Mando caring for the kid. Right, and keeping him safe and, and all like that relationship is the strong. So who is he without the kid? Um, it it made him not soft, but but something to care about. Um, yeah. Right. Tough guy, armor, you literally can't see his face, but he cares deeply for the kid. Well, what is he now? Right. And I do believe me personally, I don't I if I were Lucasfilm, I'd let it ride for at least half of the season. Him and Bo-Katan going back and forth. Then maybe do this, but I've heard a lot of rumor about them doing a time jump. You know, maybe 10, 15 years. I don't know how long. But um, let's see. I think we established that Ben uh-huh. Solo's a baby here and not or not even born yet, right? Um, so it would be nine. We don't know the exact year, but it would be nine or ten. Um, ABY at this point, and then, um, for solo, Ben Solo, um, to have been where he was in the in the sequel trilogy, he would have had to been born around five ABY, so he'd be like a toddler right now, four, four years old, five years old, something like that. All right, so yeah, so they established that he doesn't really start training him until a little bit later on through like comics and stuff. So maybe it jumps five, six years where he's trained this kid. Cause there's the other thing too. Uh, well, one, if they do a little time jump, cause I've heard the rumor that they're going to time jump it and bring baby Yoda back, maybe with a minor growth spurt, but I mean, not much, but, and he will have his own like little lightsaber. <laughs> and, cause, and it comes from, um, I guess people that, you know, explore all the behind the scenes shit and Lucasfilm has been uh, working on prototypes for various size lightsabers lightsabers. this is one of them and the other one is a much larger lightsaber because in the High Republic there is that one Wookiee Jedi so they need it would make sense that he would have a bigger hilt for his lightsaber to fit that big hairy paw of his but uh, yeah, so well, I mean, and again, this is all speculation and rumor. 
But me, I would wait at least half of the season, get that out of the way, and then do a time jump. Because you don't want to do it right away and just bring the kid right back. Let Mando explore life a little bit without this kid, realizes he needs a kid in his life, and then you know, have the kid come back, maybe save his ass or something. That'd I feel be- like that's a that's a perfect end of a season sort of thing to do, right? You can play out this whole uh, thing that happens on Mandalore where Mando does not want to be the ruler and people on Mandalore want him to be the ruler, but Bo-Katan is the one that wants to rule and he's trying to, ha- like, you play that whole thing back and forth and it could probably culminate with the two of them battling it out when Mando has no interest in doing that. You know, you could do all that. And then at the end of the whole season, you could skip forward to uh, uh, Grogu and Luke and hell, maybe even Kylo Ren at that point showing up in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah. I think that they, be- have, they have to be careful because the timeline can't go on that long. Right. I mean, if you keep pushing it forward, you get to a point where you're now at a sequel trilogy timeline. Well, and then- I mean, and it can, and here, here's two things within that one (laughs) uh, a lot of people i've seen posting like oh my god so now that he's with luke we already know that uh kylo ren destroys the temple did he kill baby grogu (laughs) you know so you you got that whole thing but i think i said before in like season one that i thought luke would get him and maybe like he was off picking berries or some shit you know it could be something like that too. They might, they may explore later on what happens with this kid and why he doesn't die during that whole thing. But he could be back with Mando. And you know, not there. the other thing too is if they push that far forward, you know, they get into to thirty ABY or whatever. Everybody that we have now as a character, aside from Mando and Grogu, are dead. Yeah, like there, there's no Luke. You know, there's no Bo-Katan. She's already 40. She'll be, no, she's 50. She's probably 50 at this point. So, you know, there's, there's no Bo-Katan anymore. You, you gave that up. You know, it, it's a long ways to go forward, even though it doesn't seem like that far. All these people, are, they're gone at this point. So I don't know, man. I don't know if they'll jump, I mean, jump that be, far ahead. I don't think they jump that far, but I think they jump about like a good 10 years into the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's halfway. That's halfway to Sequel Trill at that point. Well, you're, you're there's another thing but there was another thing I saw online with the rise of Skywalker, which because um, they were discussing the Razor Crest and you know how it got blown to the smithereens. Does he go back and get another of that model and fly around in that? Because and I don't know if this was a doctored photo because I did not look too far into it, but somebody posted he's in or or a vehicle exactly like the Razor Crest is in that scene when Lando comes, shows up with all the, uh, Oh, you know, I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking he finds the ghost somewhere along the way and the ghost shows up, ghost shows up at Exegol battle. And that, that should be each him inside now. Yeah. But somebody posted a picture of that battle and circled. There's the razor crest. So obviously he's not rebuilding the razor crest because it's dust. But if he gets another model like it, because he likes that ship. I mean, another ship that's 35 years old now, like, you guys just gotta go find one somewhere. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, and, and he'll, again, maybe, he'll see, maybe he'll find Watto and he can get one from Watto's junk area. Huh? Probably. It was parked right next to the Millennium Falcon and um, <laughs> car plots uh, right. spot on Jakku. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so again, I don't know if the photo is real. You know, if that screenshot is real, but it was from the battle. You know, I mean, you could easily Photoshop a ship in there and be like, oh, yeah, look, it's right there because it's small in there, you know. But again, I mean, when, when was Rise of Skywalker compared to Mandalorian? You were making this show, right? Oh, tw- 20 years later. No, I mean, actually filming of the series. Oh, um, I guess it would have been filmed during the first season. Right. So you had like like basically what i'm saying is like Filoni and Favro and Abrams could have gotten together and snuck the razor crest in that scene easily because you would have had the design for it you know what i mean so i don't know like i said i'll have to do a little bit more research to see if that's even real i basically just go back and watch the movie 
But uh, yeah, if they snuck it in there, maybe he gets another Razor Crest. Maybe he gets the Ghost, and that's him, because that's there too. And that would be cool too. Another nod to the fans. But yeah, I I, I just double checked just to make it so. Uh, the film uh, Rise of Skywalker did not finish post production until November of 2019, whereas Mandalorian started filming in March of 2018. So there was definitely plenty of time to do that. If somebody says that might happen. I'm not saying it happened. I just, the timeline works. Right. Uh, here, let, let me share my screen real quick. You know, it could, it could be like a, a, one of those clone trooper drop ships. They look like a ton, like the um, Razor Crest. I don't see what you're sharing yet, but. Well, I haven't shared it yet. Cause you haven't given me permission. I have to give you permission to share Let me. <laughs> no, let me. So involved. How do I do it? Make host? Sure. Okay, you're the host. Ah, uh, here. You see him right there? I don't see a damn thing. I don't see any shares. I don't see nothing. Oh, hang on. Oh, I gotta do it. Let's try that. Right okay, now I see it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Yeah, see that could be look at look at the oh, um any number thing. Yeah, look at the clone trooper drop ships. Um, I think they were in episode two, but there were also a ton of them in uh, Clone Wars True. series. Well, like I said, it could be nothing, but uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, we get, we have to we have nothing but speculation for the next what eleven months, something like that. Yeah, yeah, eleven months. So, uh, speaking of speculation, Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> so, is this basically just going to be like a fucking? Gangster series, yeah, crime, right? Space crime drama. Yeah, I think so. But I think they'll, I think they'll borrow heavily from like all the uh, adventures that they've done and uh, stuff from the extended universe, the role playing game, and all that. I think they'll borrow a bunch of story story elements from there. They clearly have no qualms with borrowing shit from extended universe at this point. So, yeah, it'd be cool, now it'd be cool if that was. The way Mando is a, a sort of Clint Eastwood spaghetti western, it would be cool if that had a kind of gangster movie feel, right? Like yeah. he gets he gets you know a, a family, a crime family, so to speak, and it feels like right Godfather or Sopranos or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And based out of Tatooine, you can get a few. Uh... Maybe not familiar, familiar faces, but there'll be a couple of things popping up here and there. They'd be like, oh, yeah, that's from New Hope or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it'll be cool. Definitely fun. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot for them to take from. I mean, there's there's quite literally like 30 years of extended universe Boba Fett stories. So, well, I mean, thing I, everything they're... up to and including, I think, him being... The Mandalore, right? Him being the ruler of Mandalore? Yeah, you can have a bunch of flashbacks. You can do... You have to because they did not do it here. So this is an obvious setup where at least one of those chapters could be him telling the story of his escape from the Starlack pit. You know... Because they haven't touched on that. You know, that they, they, could do, they could do a season or two of explaining everything that happened in between... Return of the Jedi and him showing up on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be fun to watch. I can't wait. So again, they left us just waiting with bated breath for 11 fucking months. So well, yeah, it, oddly, this will come out before Mando season three. Yeah. Because Mando season three is now 2022, and this is the end of 2021, which almost makes me wonder if they're not doing that arrangement on purpose, and that the season three of Mandalorian will have some sort of crossover backwards tie-in to the story they tell in Boba Fett's or Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm sure it'll have a tie-in to the other series that they're doing because they did say that those are all going to kind of tie in together. So I'm sure this thing. Is going to tie in somehow. Don't know how yet, but somehow. All right. Uh, Random side note: um, seeing uh, 
Pedro Pascal's face continuously now is probably going to ruin him for me because I unfortunately watched Wonder Woman 1984. Yeah, me too. And uh, I saw the first 45 minutes. I can't go back now. I can't. I can't not see Pedro Pascal as that guy, the, wish, the Wishmaster. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll save the rest of that for our uh, Wonder Woman <laughs> next week. I guess we can do that. Uh, there you go. You got that to look forward to, guys. Have you? Have you? You haven't finished it yet, Paul? No, we started at Christmas night, uh, but we were going somewhere the next early the next morning, and it was it was like eleven thirty something when we started, and um, we we're like, if we watch this whole thing, it's gonna be one thirty in the morning. So we got to a place forty five. All right, let's, and we just haven't picked it back up yet. All right. Well, if you can manage to get through it over the weekend, we can. Uh... Review yep. it next week. Yep, I'll do it. All right, cool. So, uh, other than the fact that you know we've all got fanboy boners for uh, young Luke Skywalker running around like a maniac, they finally did it. And the first thing I said was, we, "Was that so fucking hard?" <laughs> and we cried, and we we as a group of fanboys cried over a puppet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of that, any alibis for this one? All right. Well, in no. that case. Damn good show. Keep Amazing it up. Amazing show. Yeah. Keep it up. Whatever God you're sacrificing golden caps to, <laughs> just keep going because... Keep, keep, keep doing it. Yeah, because this is the only thing that got me through some of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's it, boys. We will uh, catch you guys soon. You know, Comment below how amazed you are with the episode or or not, or, you know, whatever, if you just bummed out by it or whatever. Uh, like, subscribe, ring a bell, comment, uh, you know, hit us up on uh, whatifgeeks.com, whatifgeeks at gmail.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, uh, you know, or random uh, space communication. Uh, <laughs> something, I don't know. Hit us up, let us know what you think. And we will uh, catch you guys next week. Uh, that's it. Good night, Tony. Good night, de-aged Mark Hamill. Good night, Bib Fortuna, or Eva. <laughs> 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 <laughs>